This is Thailand, home to stunning landscapes, street food and crazy traffic. Welcome to Bangkok and to endless clogged streets. Train travel here isn't exactly known for its speedy service either. While it can be cheap and scenic, trains are slow and often delayed. On average, they travel around 40 kilometers an hour. A trip from Bangkok to Chiang Mai by rail takes 12 hours, about three hours longer than the average road trip, depending on the traffic, of course. But that's all about to change. The Thai government has big plans to become the logistics hub in Southeast Asia. It's building the Trans-ASEAN Line. That's a high-speed rail network costing more than $67 billion. This brand new high-speed railway is set to transport people and goods more than six times faster than the current trains. It'll also serve as a connection to China's massive rail network with the promise of revolutionizing trade and spurring growth across the continent. But economic downturns, contract negotiations and challenging landscapes have all conspired to derail the scheme on multiple occasions, and some doubt they'll ever be able to get things back on track. Welcome to one of the world's most challenging high-speed rail projects. For over a hundred years, Thailand's state-owned railways have transported tourists, citizens and goods across the country. With slow travel times and aging tracks, they're now in increasing need of an update, but that hasn't exactly been a top priority. Thanks to political instability and the rail sector constantly losing money, investments and proposals are often put on hold or dissolved for years. But that all changed in 2014 when China stepped in. And let's take a closer look now at the railway and the rice agreement signed by China and Thailand. The country's massive Belt and Road initiative is out to better connect East Asia and Europe. One step towards that is to create new connections within Southeast Asia, like with Thailand's high-speed railway. I'm Greg Raymond. I'm, I'm a lecturer at the Coral Bell School of Asia-Pacific Affairs at the Australian National University in Canberra. China's been pushing the Belt and Road Initiative very hard. Thailand doesn't like to say no to China. They're a very big, important neighbour, a very big trading partner. There's some analysts who think that Thailand is going to do really, really well economically out of it. But, you know, then there's others who say, no, they, you know, Thailand won't. You know, some analysts say, well, really, it doesn't matter. The, the important thing is to keep the, the relationship with China on, on a good footing. China is Thailand's largest trading partner and a huge source of tourism for the country. While it isn't putting as much money into the new railway as was initially agreed, it's still involved in supplying equipment and systems. And as you might recall, the country is pretty good at building high-speed rail. On paper, the Thai network will look like this. First, tracks will need to be laid from Bangkok to the city of Nong Khai. Six Fuxing Hao CR300 trains with eight carriages each will run on the first phase of the route on three different types of track. Ground level, elevated and tunnel. From here, it'll connect onto Laos's newly constructed high-speed rail line and run up into China. The $12 billion section of the network is expected to be complete in 2028 and it could be a jumping off point for even more connections throughout Southeast Asia. Extensions could go to Chiang Mai, Rayong, Hoa Hin, and potentially onto Malaysia and Cambodia. Now, sure, on a map, that looks logical, but on the ground, it's far from easy. Before we get into it, here's a quick word from today's video sponsor, Masterworks. It's no surprise that Thailand's high-speed rail is facing delays. Construction projects are hitting walls around the world as investors and economies struggle. But Bank of America reports investors are still investing billions competing over certain investments, high-value physical assets like fine art. The bank says art is still an attractive inflation hedge and can be an important part of a diversified portfolio, especially in 2023. While most stocks are down this year, the average piece is selling for 26% more at auction. Masterworks used art to get returns to their investors as well, filing multi-million dollar paintings with the SEC and splitting them into shares. Masterworks sold a painting since our last video in November for a 13.9% net return. That brings them to nine exits, four of them in the last three months alone. Those four sales returned 13, 17, 21 and 33% net. 
Masterworks paintings have sold out in minutes, but you can get priority access by clicking the link in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. High speed rail works best when it runs in a straight flat line, so in an ideal world you want to build on a flat surface with no trees, water or houses in the way. But this isn't an ideal world. Thailand's landscape is breathtaking to look at, but pretty hellish for engineers. Engineers signing up for this project are going to find themselves contending with almost every type of terrain, all sprinkled with delicate ecosystems and existing neighbourhoods. It'll mean tunnels, bridges, viaducts and lots of head scratching along the route. The proposed section from Bangkok to Chiang Mai exemplifies the challenges. Here the line traverses a large swamp and lake. Before construction could start, the project needed to pass an environmental assessment, and the team has now agreed to test water quality throughout construction and beyond, and oversee the egg-laying habits of local birds. But wildlife isn't the only community being impacted. In the link that will connect Nakhon Ratchasima to Nong Kai, around 700 households will have to move into government housing to make way for the new high-speed rail tracks. Now, this all takes a lot of time, money and coordination to get done. The first phase, which is divided into 14 contracts, is behind schedule with only 15% complete as of late 2022. While environmental and neighbourhood challenges have certainly created obstacles for Thailand, the government agency attributes delays to the pandemic, land acquisitions and reallocating public utility lines around the site. Phase 1 is supposed to be done by 2026, but that's looking like more and more of a distant goal. And while the project promises to yield benefits for both countries by bringing more opportunities for trade and tourism, it's no guarantee. Rail isn't the primary form of transportation in Thailand. It accounts for just 20% of passenger traffic and 2% of cargo. I think we don't know how popular the high-speed rail project will be once it's finished. Thailand's, and particularly people in Bangkok, have really loved the mass transit systems they've had put in place over the last two decades. They've got two projects, one's called the you know, Sky Rail, which goes above roads, and the other one is their underground, their subway system. And both of those have just been, you know, progressively expanded. Will people in Thailand take to travelling by high-speed rail in a big way? Still, both China and Thailand are betting big on the future of high-speed rail, and if the two countries can get this project off the ground, Bangkok could soon become Southeast Asia's next big transit hub. You can learn more about this and the other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.